Hello, I'm Elliot Hastie, and I'm here as part of the Australian Investment Council's Good News Stories series. As the world continues to grapple with the unprecedented times caused by the COVID pandemic, many businesses have had to innovate and reinvent themselves in order to sustain their businesses during these tough times. This series by the Australian Investment Council focuses on the good news stories of how private capital backed businesses have been able to reinvent themselves and in doing so have been able to support their employees as well as local and global communities. Let's take a listen. If you've ever been to an event at a Sydney or Melbourne exhibition centre, then chances are you've seen the work of DisplayWise. The company creates bespoke designs for exhibition and events, or at least it did until the COVID pandemic hit and the event industry was effectively closed. So they did like any good company, they pivoted. And to tell us about two of the brand new products that they launched during the COVID pandemic, we're joined by Dylan Retief, CEO. Hi Dylan. Hi. So tell us Dylan, what does DisplayWise do, or at least did until the pandemic hit? So DisplayWise is a national business. We have about uh, 75 staff across Sydney and Melbourne, and our footprint is about 12,000 square metres. So DisplayWise specialise in the design and production of exhibition and event displays. Uh, we design and produce displays inside experiential marketing, inside retail. Uh, so we sort of cover a wide range of those custom displays. Mm -hmm. You know, when the pandemic did hit, yep. what did you have to do? And I guess as well, how quickly did you um, have to do it? So the pandemic, when the pandemic hit, it uh, really uh, came on quick for our industry. Uh, effectively overnight, a lot of our precincts were closed, being the Sydney you know, Exhibition Centre, the Melbourne Exhibition Centre and so on. And uh, we, we lost about you know, 80 to 90% 80 to 90 of revenues virtually overnight. Wow. Mm. And when that happens, you know, is there a moment of just, well, we're just gonna sit back and watch it ride? Like I'm sure that's the easy route, um, but you pivoted, didn't you? We certainly did. So we, we did a couple of things. We looked at, uh, we are a design and production company. So many businesses were turning to online, whereas you know, we could only partly do that. We have to produce, so we had to be in our facility. So the first thing we did is we created a COVID safe work environment for everybody. Mm -hmm. And then we set about collaborating safely together to come up with different ideas that we could pivot into. And what, what were those ideas? So there was sort of two or three sort of main ideas. Uh, one of the ideas was pop-up desks. Mm -hmm. So we saw the need uh, for work at home desks. A lot of the major retailers were sort of running out. Their stock was becoming limited. Mm -hmm. And it was a timely uh, launch for us when we created that product as it was really in demand. Uh, we, so we designed that unit in-house collaboratively with our team. And we leaned on the expertise that we currently already hire, being industrial designers, cabinet makers, and so forth, to use our skills to, to, to create this product and get it out to market. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, one of the big selling points, I guess, for pop-up desks is it was in Australia, so you could beat some of the international retailers yep. to market, but also it was screwless. Yes. Yeah. So it really was an innovative product. Mm. It wasn't just about you know, having a desk at home. It was having a desk at home that you could put together with no tools in 60 seconds. Uh, it was, so Australian design, Australian made, all sourced from local, you know, products. So we didn't have to worry about international shipping or things like that. It's all done here locally in Australia. And how quickly did that take to design? You know, um, it sounds like quite a laborious process, but you yeah. guys did it pretty quickly, didn't you? We, we really did. It, look, it, uh, the product was kind of quick to design, but as you know, launching a product and designing a product are two different things. Mm. So we created the product and then we set about taking it to market. We needed to work out the pricing points. We worked out how to ship these things. We, we, you know, we refined the design. So, but it was, you know, it was a, a you know, three or four weeks. The design was done in a matter of days though, but launching was, uh, was a few weeks. So with Bear Hygiene, that was one of your other products, wasn't it? And that was to solve the problem of 
you know, an attractive hygiene station. That's right. So Bear Hygiene was the second pivot that we came up with. Uh, Bear Hygiene was created because we saw a gap in the market. Mm -hmm. We saw the market was getting flooded with the metal pole uh, kind of designs. And being a design and production business, we set out to design a high quality premium solution that, that looks not only functions well, but also looks good. Mm -hmm. And where are these being rolled out to? Was it, you know, is it more a consumer end of the market or is it sort of for your Woolworths, your grocery stores? Look, the end of the market that we really attacked was the, um, the, the, the pointy end of the market being the custom solutions or, or those brands that really felt that they, they needed more than just, uh, you know, some gel on a pole. So the, the markets that we went to or have sold into are like your high-end sort of car, like Porsche, mm -hmm. um, BMW, uh, even Pandora taken some. Mm -hmm. Uh, Maya took a whole bunch as well, so you'll see them all through Maya. So the unit really acts as a as a really nice designed element, and it hand, hand sanitizes as well. I can imagine as well that when you know the exhibition centres do open up as well, they would be looking for products like this to use as well. That's exactly right. I mean, it is part of the COVID safe plan for the event industry reopening, is to provide solutions like this. So we will be, you know, offering those solutions to, to our existing client base, to the organisers that we work with, to roll out a, a nice Australian design and made product for the event industry. Now talk to me a little bit about the bare hygiene units. Um, and what opportunities do they bring in terms of additional revenue streams? Sure. Well, so the bare hygiene units, we've got a range of units uh, to suit a few different mediums that we thought were important. Um, being a uh, retail sector or an office sector or even a hotel foyer. So there's a, there's a luxe unit, which is a really high-end, mm. uh, very fancy uh, unit. Uh, so the design of those is on purpose to, to create not only just a functional uh, unit, but also an aesthetically nice one too. And is there the ability, I guess, to put advertising on these units and drive additional revenue back, back towards you? Look, there certainly is. Mm -hmm. One of our clients uh, bought quite a large quantity of them and have since put them into uh, pubs and clubs and venues and, and that are open and whatnot. And what, they, what, what that has is the ability to interchange the, the graphics and the logos and the messaging and whatnot on it. So it's really created a new advertising space or a new marketing space where it's not just a billboard on the side of the road. It's, it's, it's an element that people have to interact with. Mm. So they're more engaged with that, uh, with that unit. Therefore, they're gonna notice that branding opportunity uh, more so than driving on a road. So it's created that new market, I believe, of advertising, marketing, and branding. Wow, that's quite a, quite a successful pivot to create a, a functional box that can then also make more engagement um, with people. When your team was coming up with that, was that, was that even considered or was it just like, that solved that gap as we were talking about earlier of a nice hygiene station? So yes, it certainly was. It wasn't just about a nice designed uh, a hand unit. It was about the opportunity of where can we take this? And the ability for branding was in one of the very first discussions on uh, that billboard style media and that advertising space. We, we think that, uh, bare hygiene units are going to be around for a very long time and uh, the, the interaction that the public will have with them is just prime for that marketing space. And tell us a bit about the event industry. Obviously, you know, we're six months on, mm. on now from the sort of start of the pandemic. You've got New South Wales opening up yep. slowly and increasing capacity. Yep. What's it looking like for you guys? Look, it, it is one of those, uh, those industries that are really hard hit. Mm -hmm. And the four square meter rule is what's kind of holding those uh, events uh, back. We, you can technically run an event, but it's not, uh, it's not feasible at the moment, being with the restrictions of uh, four square meter rule and sitting down indoors and things like that. It really sort of has kept the brakes on. Mm. Uh, so the industry is, uh, for those who haven't been able to pivot, the industry is really struggling. Fortunate for us, we've been able to pivot into these other brands. And when you do sort of, when the event industry does come back, I guess, and you've got more exhibitions, 
Um, you'll obviously, I guess, still have the, the, you know, the core product of the displays, yep. but will you keep these two other side products? We certainly will. Uh, one of the reasons uh, that we've all been looking at is to diversify our revenue stream, even prior to COVID. So COVID really kind of forced our hand into uh, making that happen quicker. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we will definitely be keeping these brands and growing these brands, uh, especially the pop-up desk range. You know, that will uh, continue to evolve into something, uh, you know, uh, much greater than what it is right now. Mm -hmm. that it's been a really interesting process creating new brands inside our business at such a, a fast pace. And, you know, that has really been, um, uh, it's, it's really helped having Evolve private capital to help us navigate our way through that. Yeah. I've run business uh, for run the business for a long time, but to create n two new brands and take those products to market was a new space for us and for me. So the involvement that Evolve Private Capital had in getting those ideas to market was just invaluable. I was going to ask, how much help did you get from your invest investors like Evolve uh, in getting these products out there and getting them out there quickly? Yeah, as, as I said, quite a lot of help. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Evolve uh, Private Capital was integral in in it kind of providing that senior or that top level, you know, how to yeah. uh, not just get the brands out there, but market them and how you should market at the price point, you know, how you should do a lot of these things are really, uh, really helpful in that aspect. And how, how do you see that relationship continuing um, moving forward as, you know, we come out of come out of COVID and everything sort of starts to tick back to normal? Look, uh, as part of our investment plan inside the business and to grow the business was always to diversify the revenue stream. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, this has just made it happen a lot quicker. So we will continue that uh, growth and investment sort of uh, direction that we have uh, and, and expand on it. So we'll expand on it, but maybe we'll have the ability to take a little bit more time to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and for your own expansion, do you see another side product coming soon. Where do you see the company's expansion over the next 12 months? Well, one of the other areas that we pivoted into was also, uh, we've always worked inside the retail environment or mm -hmm. the retail space. I mean, Westfields is one of our uh, clients that we work with quite a lot, providing uh, unique displays inside Westfields and store-in, store fit outs. So we have pushed that a little more through this mm -hmm. period and the retail, because the retail environment you know, has mostly stayed open. It's allowed us to capitalize on that revenue stream. So we will grow that and we'll also look to continue growth in that space uh, coming out of the pandemic. And where else do you see potential avenues, I guess, of um, having your products? You know, you've got the retail, then you'll have the events. Is there anywhere else that you might look to in the future? Look, I think uh, a natural progression or expansion on the pop-up desks is inside, you know, just honing on some of those uh, at-home furniture range mm -hmm. uh, ideas. When you were, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic and you were looking into how to pivot as a business, yeah. was one of the primary factors that ability to keep the staff on, to keep it ticking over? Because obviously mm. a lot of businesses have been hit and a lot of people have been hit hard. Yep. Um, was people, at, I guess, the forefront of mind? Look, people were the forefront of mind, especially in a very collaborative business such as ours. So as I mentioned, uh, the fir one of the first things we did was create a COVID safe environment. Mm -hmm. And our, the majority of our team, we've not only been able to keep our team, but we've been able to keep them active and busy and for the most part in the office. Due to having 12,000 square meters allows us to social distance really well. But what it also allowed us to do was to collaborate and come up with these ideas as a team. Mm. So people and being able to work with other people is really uh, one of the main reasons as to why we've been so successful in these pivots. Do you think that that's something, I guess, that the business industry might lose a little bit of as people do work from home or they, you know, they do not come into the office? Uh, look, I, I think so. I think collaboration is really important. and. We've done our fair share of uh, video meetings. We've had those, but, but as everyone will say, they're not the same. Mm. It's not the same as one-on-one -on -one collaboration. 
it's why the event in exhibition industry is so important to get back up and running is is that face there's that human interaction is that face-to-face -face medium done in a safe way it's really important because the collaboration that you get out of that is so so much greater than what you can achieve over a video chat and if we take it back to um, your employees that helped build these these units um, have you been able to grow the team at all during the pandemic Look, what we've done is we've really successfully retained um, the majority of our staff. And it's not just about staff working from home and, and sort of doing work. They're actively engaged each and every day. And, and because they do work from the office and they do have that collaboration uh, with each other, COVID safe, uh, it has allowed for them to uh, not just keep their job, but retain their, their, their work life and their career. And, and we th I think that is really important from a mental health perspective. There's a lot of um, talk about the mental health of people working from home mm. and how that may or may not affect them. A and what we have been able to do in display wise is create these opportunities for people to keep that engagement with other colleagues and keep that mental stimulation. And whilst it was tough to get that set up at the start. I think it's paying dividends yeah. now because of the, the, um, the workplace environment that my staff continue to work in. And how important was that to you when deciding to pivot? Well, it was, it was everything. Yeah. It really was. Uh, you don't have much of a business without your staff. So I can have a lot of cool machines, but no business. So staff are number one and, and they, have, they have played a key role in in display wise being able to pivot as it's done not only just from their id generation uh, but their execution and their ability to be able to follow through and really deliver that high quality high design product that we're that we're known for just in a separate product yeah and i guess it's exciting as well for them you know you come into work thinking you're going to be doing one thing and then next you're creating a whole new range of products that's right it's a very dynamic workplace it's, uh, it's a great space to be in. It's great for the creatives. You know, I have a lot of uh, industrial designers and creative people in the business, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a great space for them to be challenged in. Wonderful. Well, listen, Dylan from DisplayWise, thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate it and your insights into how to pivot successfully. Thanks so much for the time.